Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rogue Wave podcast, the frequency for all things pop culture and the disruptors behind it. We talk comics, movies, TV, and pop culture every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on Facebook.com slash We Are Rogue Matter, YouTube.com slash Rogue Matter, Twitch.tv slash We Are Rogue Matter, and Twitter.com slash Rogue underscore Matter. We take this amazing live stream and turn it into the greatest podcast known to man, available on all major podcasting apps, including iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. I am your host, Michael Dolce, as always, joined by my cohort in crime, Mr. Hassan Godwin himself, the Lord of the Radio. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> I like throwing some curveballs at your way. Of course. Yes. That's the wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the curveball. <laughs> We've got a great show tonight. Uh, we are going to be talking about the most anticipated TV shows, superhero slash Star Wars related TV shows coming up in 2023. Uh, we've got a couple of other things to go through. Uh, but first, go to roguematter.com. Check out all the awesomeness that's up there. Uh, we got a, a website uh, tweak coming, so some updated graphics coming, some uh, updated features coming. Uh, and it's all going to be here um, on February 16th. It's going to be pretty exciting. That That is the date to watch uh, some some major changes to the Rogue Matter site um, and where we really start digging in and, and building this uh, amazing community. So check out roguematter.com right now where everything is free to read right now. So you, you better consume it now before it's too late. All right. It's 2023. Um, and I got to tell you, the only thing we had to talk about really was the TV show um, stuff that we were going to look forward to, right? But then... I, I, I'm seeing all these messages, and it turns out the Golden Globes was yesterday. Who knew? Uh, I know that the Golden Globes uh, has kind of faced a little bit of scrutiny um, that uh, over, you know over the uh, DEI, um, which uh, which is a big component of it, uh, whether or not uh, diversity uh, and inclusion uh, was happening overseas. Uh, they had basically, um, you know. I guess a history of of not being very diverse uh, in terms of uh, the reporters out there and who is voting on things. And so the Academy, uh, or not the Academy, but you know what I mean, the uh, you know actors and whatnot kind of took a stand against the Golden Globes and demanded change. And this is the first televised Golden Globe Golden Globes ceremony that's happened uh, in a few years now. And uh, I guess there were some big winners. You know, we got Quinta Brunson. Uh, Tyler James Williams, uh, Ki Hu Kwan, uh, Colin Farrell, Jennifer Coolidge, Steven Spielberg, Michelle Yao, uh, Julia Garner, Zendaya, uh, Guillermo del Toro, Kate Blanchett, and Austin Butler were among individual winners. And I did leave one out specifically because I thought this was kind of apropos. Angela Bassett wins uh, a Golden Globe for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Uh, my immediate reaction, again, I'm seeing kind of like these little news items, felt like it was a big deal and at the same time was the quietest big deal I've ever seen. Is that is that, uh, is that a fair summary of it? Just because I feel like the Golden Globes ha just, there were no, there was no like lead up to the Golden Globes happening. Usually there is. There was no kind of excitement for it. But now um, I'm kind of excited that something from a comic book movie actually took home, uh, you know, it, it happens on, on occasions. But, um, you know, this one, this one kind of caught my eye. What, what, what was your uh, reaction to, uh, to Angela? To the news. Win? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty great. I mean, she was, uh, she was instrumental in that film, you know, she was one of the, the standout, uh, kind oh, of circumstances yeah. in that film. So yeah, I mean, it was well-deserved. Um, it's, gonna, it's like the Oscars junior, like the golden globes, you know, whatever right. controversy that came behind it. There was a lot of stuff. I've seen, I saw a lot of buzz. About the Kiki Kwan, like you know, being there and thanking Steven Spielberg for his uh, uh, for his, for stardom, basically his mm -hmm. his, uh, his his entry into this uh, you know this this universe of acting and Hollywood and whatever, and that was yeah. pretty cool. It's good to see him, uh, and you know, and he was you know, it's good to see him the monitor. I I suspect he's in uh, he's in the the latest in the Indiana Jones movie somewhere, although everybody denies it. Mm. But he's just he's just up on everybody's radar all of a sudden. And so that's just 
you know, and he was on the set. Now, supposedly he was just visiting, but who knows? So it's, uh, he looks exactly like what a child star, like when he grows up would look like, like I, I mess up pictures it, and stuff. Like and I'm would, like, he, it looks like, he looks like you would hope a child star would grow up to look like, well, like an older version <laughs> yeah, of himself. Yeah, I know. Some of them don't always. Uh, don't, well, that's, what, that's my point, though. You see some of these that. child stars and you're like, whoa, like that doesn't look anything like that guy. No, this looks got he looks exactly like what I would picture him in 1986 to grow up and looking like. So he looks fantastic. He did a great job there. Yeah, he's, yes. Well done. He, you know. You know, you would up, think it's an it's an easy looking. order, but it's actually not. I mean, the the list no, goes growing down. up is pretty rough. It's a you know, yeah, it's a, it's a catastrophic. Uh, you know, every seven years you're just you're completely destroyed and become something completely new, cell on a yeah. cellular level. So, you know, that's kind of hard to maintain. <laughs> yeah. So there's a there was a LinkedIn article. Did the Globes deliver on DEI? Um, Hollywood loves a good comeback story, and questions have swirled around whether the Golden Globes could be redeemed from scandal. NBC aired the awards show Tuesday night, roughly 20 months after the network yanked it due to the LA Times investigation that uncovered ethical conflicts and a lack of diversity, including no black members within the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, which puts on the Globes. This year's show faced a do or die moment and barring a rating spike, it was expected to almost certainly be NBC's final Globes telecast, according to Puck. Um, so that that's i mean that's a big that's a big thing right now in terms of because like you said this is kind of oscar's light um or oscar's junior it i don't know do any of these award ceremonies mean anything much anymore i mean the ratings have gone down precipitously from all of these award shows um uh, with with the birth of social media do we really even need these award shows anymore i mean it used to be a kind of a big deal because you get to see celebrities but now i should go on instagram and see these guys you know yeah i mean like there there should be uh there should be award shows i mean uh, excellence should be awarded you know or it should be you know the the competitive spirit for the profession for the sake of the profession should be maintained um you know and it, it does help the actors with their with their next job you know to become mm -hmm. you know so so we understand like like we were talking before about metrics of success right it's a metric of success for them right yeah um something that can be measured and something that can be publicly displayed unlike wealth which you can't always you know which which is kind of a taboo in our society strangely enough to go around flaunting your wealth to to demonstrate exactly how successful you are you got right. you have plaques and statues on your wall you know um yep. so i think those are you know whether they should be televised or not i mean uh, shouldn't any should anything be televised <laughs> like everything is kind of down you know because people have yeah. found like you know better ways to spend their time so i mean i i think you know also as you say, with the social media, you could just get the highlights off of. I think the ceremony should be there, whether or not they should be broadcast live. I mean, yeah, I guess if it's not getting them any ratings, then I guess it shouldn't. You know, I can understand them not doing it anymore. I saw the um, who's the guy from Eternals who got really, really buff, Pakistani actor. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Hmm. Yeah, neither can I. I don't know who he you're was. Talking uh, about he was exactly. in um, Silicon Valley. I never watched Silicon Valley. Oh, you never watched Silicon? Oh, you gotta watch Silicon no. Valley. Silicon Valley nah, is I do, amazing. I don't, I don't gotta watch Silicon Valley. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on. This is why we have computers here. I did. I did this to myself, by the way. I'm you not, know what I did? I'm I, not. I woke up at three thirty in the morning to go to the bathroom. Then, when I came back, I started thinking about my day. And like all the things I have to get done, mm -hmm. couldn't quite fall asleep. Ah, Kumal Nanjiani. There we go. See, there we go. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Well that's done. What, that's what that's what uh, our producer extraordinaire uh, Aaron uh, provides to us. Um, and um, and now like I ended up starting to fall asleep just as my alarm went off, like two hours later. So one of those my my brain is uh, is half full right now. No question about it. Uh, but anyway, so he was talking about his. Um, his his Hulu series, right? And um, 
we talking about because it takes place in the 80s. And I'm going to get a name of that show in a second here, too. Oh, the, the Welcome to Chippendales, uh, the story of the, uh, the creators of the Chippendales empire in the 80s. And he talked about how in the 80s, you know, flaunting your success, that was what you did. And then the 90s came and it was like the grunge era and you had to dress down and, and it was and it was looked looked upon if you flaunted your success as being like faux pod. So he said that, you know, it's, it's ironic because now we're back into that grunge, like don't flaunt your success, you know, don't, you know, don't make a big spectacle. So it's, it'll be interesting to see if the award show phenomenon rises with the next, you know, the next 10 years or so, it, what, if the pendulum swings back to, hey, it's okay to flaunt your success. It's okay to be, you know, like your 80s, you know, exhibitionist self, you know, so it, it should be, it should be interesting to see. But right now, it? yeah. What's that? You think the the you think the award shows are a, a, you know like a vanity project? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Hollywood loves to pat themselves on the back, right? Like they love like like all the actors do. Because I mean, here you know, and look, uh, being grunge, you know, children. I wouldn't say children, but you know, we, growing up in the grunge era. I mean, you had every single band was like this award means nothing, and like if they won a Grammy, right? Um, this award means nothing and this, you know, what is, you know, how do you grade art and how do you whatever? Um, and so it is subjective, right? I mean, we talk about that all the time. Art is a, an extremely subjective thing. Like how do you, what's the best, right? Like how did it, how is this the best, right? You know, how is this show the best over that show or this, this movie or this performance? Um, you know, especially in in a, in a, in in years where there's multiple right there's multiple bests I, I think back to 94 right pulp fiction and and forrest gump came out both of them could have won best picture in my book in my book um easily both of them could have so how, how did forrest gump how did forrest gump just be deemed better than pulp fiction it was subjective right it it had an academy of voters they voted and they tallied the votes and that was it right i mean it's it's um but at the same time, you know, you could you could ask a hundred different people, and they might give you a different result. You know, so it is definitely a vanity project. It's definitely something to kind of, you know, like you said, you know, put something on on your wall somewhere. And 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 look, I don't fault anybody for being proud of their accomplishments. You know, if you're able if you're able to convince a body of people that that what you did stood out amongst your peers, I mean, go for it. But I think also, as as I kind of mentioned the um the idea of an award show right now is um is almost you know it's a quiet it's a quiet thing right now it's a quiet thing and i think that's why we barely even knew that the golden globes were happening all right sounds yeah. fair yeah i don't know we'll see all right well, let me ask you a question though hmm. angela bassett winning do you think this is going to spell more success uh for her do, do you think this is going to give I, I think i think would you say it's over under 50 percent she gets an oscar nomination for this role uh probably over i think over i think definitely over 50 percent. right i think i think she's definitely going to nail an oscar nom for it doesn't mean she's going to win it but it doesn't doesn't probably hurt right not, I mean, especially after she won the golden globe because it's all like uh you know it's all this weird i mean but maybe it's a sweep could be a sweep you know, who knows? It's weird that she, you know, that she comes up on the radar at all. It's like you never know who who the the pendulum's going to favor in these things. Right. So, you know, this might be her year to win an Oscar. I don't know. Probably. Well, but yeah, I'd say it's fair. It's a fair bet. The nomination's a fair bet. Yeah, I think I think definitely you're going to get a nomination. But what's interesting is because we've had this whole, you know, art versus content debate. Right. We've had this whole uh, Quentin Tarantino, maybe. Saying you know he's, he he wishes movies could go back to being not just superhero movies, not just popcorn movies. Um, is it a is it a function of she gave a really great performance, which I think she did, and I think Black Panther seems to be the one movie that kind of has um, Teflon skin when it comes to being criticized as just like a popcorn movie or or a or a comic book film. Like I think but, you know the first one got an Oscar nomination, you know, and that's for Best Picture, which doesn't you know that doesn't happen very often for a comic book film um so maybe it's helpful that she's in this franchise but i'm wondering is is the guard kind of lowering uh, you know the more we see these type of performances in comic book films 
and see these performances get recognized, are we going to see a trend of more comic book movie actors and actresses uh, getting recognition for their work despite being in a comic book movie? Do you know what I'm saying? That's that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if that's going to be the case now. Like the more and more of these things kind of happen, um, the more the it's going to normalize comic book movies as you know, capable of winning these things. What do you think? Well, I, I believe so. I mean, the more you win out, you know, the more you normalize anything, the more normal it becomes, you know, just in the, for the yeah. sake of it. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I hope so. But, you know, I mean, you know, there's a, there's, there's, there's metrics, there's indicators that this, you know, the genre is kind of winding down anyway. So there, you know, there'll mm -hmm. be something else to rise into its place. And then we'll be wondering if, you know, if any, maybe it's going to be sci-fi movies from now on about, you know, blue aliens in space, because that's the thing that, that made the most money. Right. So right. By the next year, there's going to be 18 uh, sci-fi movies of blue aliens. And then what we'll, we'll be wondering is it, you know, can a Navi ever win an Academy Award? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that would be, um, I think that's going to be, yeah something we got to look at it, it avatar became the highest grossing movie of 2022 by the way i think it's up to 1.7 mm -hmm. billion very now. quickly yep as as yeah as predicted <laughs> yeah let me let me ask you a question though and i think i asked this on last week's show but i gotta ask it again though look i love and respect james cameron's movies and him as a director um i appreciate avatar one and avatar two yet I don't feel, and this could just be my bubble, that Avatar has a vocal like fan base or like a fanatic fan base out there. Uh, again, people are seeing this movie; they're seeing it multiple times. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. My point is, though, I feel like the Avatar fan base is different than all other similar genre type fan bases, right? Like you have your DC fans, you have your Marvel fans; they're crazy. They go nuts for this stuff, right? They dress up as that. I, I feel like I go to Comic Cons. I don't really see Avatar people as much. You know, I don't see Navi people dressing up as Navi. I don't well, see a, like you know, that dressing up like that's a hell of a commitment. You know, okay. well, not a lot well, of people are. Have you seen some of this cosplay at, at conventions though? I mean, it's a hell of a commitment. You know, regardless. Yeah, but right? I mean, I mean, painting yourself, walking around half naked and painting yourself blue—that's uh, that's above and beyond. A lot of mystiques. Yeah, a lot, a lot of mystiques out there, for sure. That do that, they do that. So my point is like, why not more Avatar people? Where are these people? Like, one point seven billion dollars—that's a lot of people seeing movies. Who are these people? Where are they located? Is there like a support group? Is there like a Discord? You know, forum well, somewhere. You know, nothing's more successful than success, right? So like, a movie starts to make a lot of money people come out to see the movie because it's making a lot of money and it starts to sell itself, right? It becomes mm. a phenomenon in and of itself. Also, James Cameron is a brand that, you know, that, that that's the epitome of nothing sells success like success, you know? He's successful. Yeah. People expect his stuff to be successful, so they go and, you know, it's almost like a hysteria. They go and make sure that it's, it's you know, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm looking up right now. Um, where are James Cameron Cameron's avatar fans from? There's an avatar.com community. I mean, could seriously? Oh, okay, here we go. This is Rotten Tomatoes. Avatar was the biggest movie of all time. So where are his fans? And this came out in 2019, 10 years after James Cameron's sci-fi adventure premiered. We look at its cultural impact or lack thereof to figure out why it failed to inspire a cult fan base. See, I'm not alone on this. It's it's again, is James Cameron I mean, buying all these tickets? You can, yeah, yeah. Um, you can look at it as <laughs> like maybe there is no there is no social cultural impact, but I mean there was there is still a, there's definitely an industry impact on it. You know, it his be Absolutely. after Avatar, the the motion capture industry exploded. Right. Yeah. You got the Lord, of the, the excuse me, the Planet of the Apes movies. Um, you got. Uh, I mean, yeah, they started it. They started with Yoda and and Gollum, 
with uh with the Lord of the Rings movies and the 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 Star Wars prequels and and Jar Jar. That's kind of what sort of started it, but it it came out of its infancy with uh with Avatar. And so, you know, it became a viable form of acting, a viable form of uh, you know, of cre- creativity because of that. So that's a, that's a huge cultural, that's a industry impact. So maybe that's what that's its contribution. And I mean, yeah. like, yeah, you're right. It's um that is that is an interesting phenomenon. But the other thing that's phenomenon is that apparently you don't need a fan base to be the number one movie of all time. <laughs> no, that's, yeah. You know, so I mean maybe the hysteria we put behind the potency of a fan base is misplaced also. And that that bears uh, examination also. That's an that's a good point too because I'm reading this article by the way in Rotten Tomatoes is a great article because it says well, it, it even points to, to what you were just re- saying. You're, you're reading it while I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, you know, I'm listening and and I'm like they have like a bunch of um you know bullet points to their to their um to their thesis so to speak. But they said mind you we're not talking about Avatar's industry impact here which is what you were saying um as a delivery system for the next evolution in 3D it was truly groundbreaking groundbreaking and sparked an obsession with 3d movies that still hasn't abated um so well i mean where's where's the fan base for aliens like you know there's there's where's the fan base for the thing there are there are phenomenal cultural touchstones that don't yeah. that you can tell have a fan base they don't people don't necessarily have to dress up like kurt russell for you to you know, know. For, for you to believe that there are fans of these things they don't dress up like vin diesel no, and, I know, so but that's, you know but that that's the, I guess the, the whole point, right? Like, no, the, I don't know what the whole point. You just said, like, where is the fan? Well, no, 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 because no, no, so, so, for example, for Fast and Furious, right? Like, what you, what you just brought up, though, that's more of a mainstream type of film, right? Like, you, Avatar would would appear to be, right, more of a cult genre type. It's of It's not a cult. It's the number. How could it be a cult if it's the number one movie? financially of all times that's that's very much the antithesis of a cult you know that's bona fides right right there so i mean it's not well let me tell you i I mean it says here sci-fi fans don't need a ton of fodder to latch onto a property joss whedon's firefly didn't even air a full season and fans rallied around it so passionately they willed a movie into existence star trek was a ratings flop when it first aired but planted enough fan seeds it eventually went from cult series to movie franchise. Uh, Akira was a single standalone anime film from 1988, and you still see its iconic poster uh, repurposed for everything from Batman to Seinfeld. Blade Runner was a bomb, but still got comic book spinoffs and unofficial merch. When was the last time you saw someone wearing an Avatar shirt? A quick Google search for Avatar fan films brings up a lot of results for Avatar The Last Airbender anime series. Uh, I mean, it's, it is... Again... I'm not poo-pooing their success. I'm just saying I'm almost baffled by it. I'm almost baffled by it. It's a very good movie. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I mean, there's more, there's obviously more metrics for yeah. for fandom than t-shirts and cosplay. I mean, we're, yeah. we're we're acting like it's only the only way to tell that there's a there's a viable community out there that appreciates something is if they dress up. Yeah. Like the thing in the, you know, that's not, obviously that's not the only way. So get this though. I just said this profound um, thought. Avatar represents the country. And these cult fan bases represent social media. They're the loudest people. They are the most vocal. They are the ones that get all the attention. But at the end of the day, when people actually vote on what they are going to watch, the results astound everyone. Well, I mean, you know, the the phenomenon of of using things to to measure, you know, using an unproven uh, a source of measurement to measure something, you know, that's, that's equally nebulous and out of out of reach is right. probably, you know, it's probably a mistake. It's almost always going to be a mistake. Now, sometimes the the stars align and it happens to to line up with everything that you predicted it would. I mean, even I didn't predict 
that Avatar was going to be the second Avatar movie was going to be a smash hit. I just knew it was going to do well. You know, I yeah, just yeah. knew that people were going to go see it out of pure curiosity, if not, you know, uh, you know, rabid fanaticism. But, you know, did I did I think it was going to be the biggest movie? That, you know, maybe I did. I don't know. I knew <laughs> I knew it was going to beat the uh, Top Gun. I kind of knew that, you know, that was going to do that. Um, you know what? I was shocked that Top Gun did as well as it did. Um, I enjoyed the hell out of it. So once I saw it, I, I wasn't surprised by it. But I, I'm not going to say I doubted James Cameron. I knew it was going to make a lot of money. I didn't think it was going to skyrocket to, to again, the, the amounts of money that it has now made quietly. Yeah, I just quietly done that. I didn't. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. Everything is not everything is loud. That's the problem yeah. with everybody. It's like it's not. I, I haven't heard anything about it. It's like, well, look, there are there are ways to tell that things are happening that are not social media and they're not Twitter, you know. And just because you didn't know they weren't happening doesn't mean they weren't happening, and that it it's a you know it's sort of a big deal. This kind of contradicts your your position on um on the Golden Globes. <laughs> Maybe it does. Because, I don't know. Just because you didn't know it was happening doesn't mean that it, you know, that it wasn't slowly creeping along and making a billion dollars. But I mean, look, the industry is going through some stuff right now. I remember like all the punditry was talking about the Jurassic World, you know, that whole franchise is dead mm -hmm. and nobody nobody cares. And the Jurassic World made a, a billion dollars. And then it, it was, it's, I think it's the only other, the, the third movie to make a billion dollars this year. There's one of three movies to make a billion dollars this year. And now they're talking about like, oh, is, uh, you know, Sam Neill and the rest of them going to be in Jurassic World, you know, uh, part four or, you know, whatever. Now they're talking about more sequels. Moments, mm -hmm. moments ago, they were talking about the, se the, the series needs to end. The franchise is over. <laughs> so it, it, people don't really know what's going on, right? The, the bottom line is the the people they you know they they keep their own counsel on what they're interested in seeing why they're going to see something and whatever and there's no way to predict that stuff just give them something worthwhile to watch you know give them something you know exciting and that's kind of like light, lighthearted and rompy you know and yeah. I guess they'll go see it yeah. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, that's well. That's what I'm saying. It's it's almost it's almost the uh, the great um, uh, reveal uh, uh, as to what people are actually into when when all is said and done. All right, what do you guys think? Chime in. Did did you enjoy the Golden Globes? Did you even watch? Did you uh, even know they were happening? Uh, talk about you know Avatar crossing the 1.7. Uh, does it actually have a fan base, or is James Cameron actually buying all those tickets himself? Put your comments in the ticketing, uh, in, sorry, in the ticketing. Put your comments in the comment field and we will respond. When we come back, the TV shows in the superhero slash Star Wars genre, we are looking forward to in 2023 when we return. Hi guys, Mike Dolce here from the Rogue Wave Podcast. If you like this video, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. It really helps us out. Leave a comment, let us know what you'd like to see in future episodes, and tune in every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, for a brand new episode of the Rogue Wave Podcast.